Good morning. So, this is my encore hike of Gorgat today. Last Saturday I did this with Orin on my back and doing it again. So, uh, it's just now a little bit after 10. Should be about a two hour hike. So, he, Orin, really loves to ride on this backpack. In this backpack. Whew. It's hard tiring with him. He's heavy. Hiking at this little steep part and talking. Trying not to fall over. Whew, excuse me. Okay, so on my hike today, I hope just to talk about a few things, or well, mainly one thing, about having, about having, raising a baby here in Heiseru. The one thing about this trail is that there's so many steps, actual like, steps so doing any sort of hiking steps right aren't your friend but it can help make the trail shorter I guess no switchbacks you just go up and over but steps many steps up many steps down Okay, let's do this. So what I kind of want to talk about is like in the past, he's next month he will be two years old. So he's our first child. Our, so this is the only experience that we've had. So sometimes people like to ask, oh, what is it like raising a baby in Japan? And really, that's a difficult question because this is the only experience we have of raising a kid. We've not, we never had a kid in America, so we can't compare it to anything. So whenever we do move back home, when we do move back home and have a baby there, we can compare it to Japan. But as of now, we can't. And also, our experience here in Maizuru of having him and raising him and giving birth to him and doing all that is Maizuru. All over Japan, everywhere in Japan they do it differently. I mean, even in Kyoto City they have different regulations and rules that have to happen. So we get a monthly allowance basically because we had them because we're on the national health insurance and that's determined by the city you live in how much you get. So we get uh, we, every few months we get some money from the city office. And that's different than like Kyoto and other cities nearby. So anything, just as a, uh, what's the word? Anything, like anything that happens to us is our situation. It's only in my, it's Maizuru. So we can't say this is what it's like all over Japan or all over Kyoto Prefecture. Our experience is, all, is only here in Maizuru, but our ex I, I, don't, I don't think their experiences are vastly different over all over Japan. So, reading, hearing about someone's experience in another prefecture, Fukui, since it's right next to us, is gonna be different, but I don't think it's gonna to be too different, too greatly different. So, but again, this is going to be from, I'm going to be talking right on for this video about, okay, so it has a sat, um, about our experience, but more so about 
more so my experience, I guess. My thoughts and comments on it. I do plan on making another video. Videos, actually, I think. About giving birth here in Mizaru. But that's taking more research. And I just need to get my act together and write, write down what I want to say with the help of joy. Let's see, we had Orin here, was born in Japan, Mizuru. Mizuru, Japan here in the hospital. At the time at the hospital, he was the only foreigner. We were the only foreigners in the hospital. Um, he was a hit with all the nurses and doctors, as Jory said. Um, they would, like some nurses would actually just come in or other, other new mothers would stop by and look at him. And I mean, people wanted to see this blonde haired, blue eyed baby. That was Oki. Big. Big. He was a whole lot bigger than the roommate, Joy's, the, the other mom who had a baby within a day after Joy. He was big. Much bigger than him. Still is bigger than him. But we still see them sometimes. And he's. Basically, he's always been bigger than your average Japanese kid his age, or older, older. And because of that, we hear, Oki. Okay. Or they ask, how old is he? Or they ask, is he two? Is he three? We say, no, he's one year, 10 months. One year, 11 months. And they're like, wow, he's so big. But this is done in Japanese. So, even when he was born, one of the nurses made a comment about how big he was. And I kind of joked, went like, American size, or American baby, American size, I think. And she laughed. And I think, and that kind of became a thing where other people were saying that. But when we're able to, we explain to people, yeah, he's bigger than Japanese and he's a little bigger than average in America. But in America, there's such variety of babies, of people. So there are small and there are big. So, whatever. Yeah, having him here, people like to comment on his size and his age. Wow, he's so big for being only one year old. Whew. And I, I believe we're gonna continue to hear that for a while. Oh, look at all these steps. Oh, at least it'll be somewhat easy coming down. Yeah, Orin? Ha! Yeah? Oh, well, okay, he's talking. Yeah, this is him talking. He's not very good at talking yet, which is okay. He makes noises, he understands us. The simple commands and whatnot. He sees things. He points to it. He makes a noise. He has a word for it. Um, but let's see. Like he sees a car, a train, truck, any sort of vehicle. It's called gi. He points to it and goes gi, gi, gi. And we repeat saying car. Train, truck, 
we tell him what it is. Basically, we speak only English to him because that's what we say. That's what we use, English. And he needs to learn, we believe he needs to learn English first. No matter how long we stay here in Japan, if it's only just a few more months or if it's another year or two, he needs to know English. And he will learn Japanese from going to interacting with other kids or going maybe eventually going to a like a day, daycare sort of thing if we are still here so he will learn Japanese but he needs to learn English first since eventually at some point we will be moving back to America um, and that's where we want to speak English there even though it's not the official language Oh, excuse me. So, let's see what else. What, what else about language? Yeah, we we teach. We we'll, we'll use some Japanese with him. Some very basic Japanese, um, like we will be saying, like when we go out, we like we will say, "Arigato gozaimasu," like thank you to the clerks and shop assistants and whatnot. Because, I mean, that's a nice thing to do. So we will make him, or not make him, but we will say it next to him. And we also say, oh, I'm going to do that. And we have an old lady, neighbor, old neighbor, lady, who's a neighbor. And um, in the mornings, she likes to poke her head out and say hi to him. And wave. And so she will speak Japanese to him, of course. And we try to get him, or we say for him, hoping he will repeat eventually, like "Good Ohio Gazimus, Good Morning," or "Konnichiwa," or actually in Japanese "Bye, Bye Bye, Bye Bye." So, yeah, he can actually. He has a word for "bye," and it's "ya, ya, ya." So, <laughs> we're not saying "Bye Bye" to anyone. He whispered it in my ear. So yeah, this is already nine minutes and thirty seconds. So I guess this will be a longer video of me talking. Uh, so yeah, I mean, language acqu acquiring a language in a foreign country, in a foreign country that doesn't speak the parents' native language, is probably challenging. It is probably a bit confusing because he hears one language from us and he hears something else. From everyone, from everyone else, he has something different. So, like, he does understand words. We could tell him to stop, and he stops. We, and of course, we say bye bye, and he, he goes bye bye, yeah, yeah. And I understand, like, sit down. Actually, which way? We'll be walking, I'll be like, which way? And he'll point which direction. Um, Let's see, like, he understands some things like that, and at one point, he, when we were at the stores, when the shop assistants would say, Arigato gozaimasu, and um, he started to bow. He saw them bowing, and so now, he doesn't do it now, he's gotten very shy recently, but right before he got shy, he would bow whenever he heard the word. So, so he's understanding more words than he actually says. Uh, someday he will speak. And we try our best. And we speak to him. And I hope talking now into this camera with him listening is good. We watch less on Pond Mon, a Japanese cartoon, only in Japanese. We try to watch more English shows cut back I'm trying to watch less it's becoming a bad habit but watch Thomas and friends this morning we watched Curious George which was on TV actually watch some YouTube English programs so we try to expose them to as much English as possible 
So, yeah, English, learning English in a non-English country, I'm sure is challenging. Okay, I'm gonna take a break. So I'll see you soon.